Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Good morning. What a joy it is to be with you in worship. As a part of my call to serve as the Director of Discipleship and Outreach for Lyft, I have been rotating through each of our congregations to preach as well as join in worship. I've begun a practice of extending greetings to help weave our story of interconnection throughout our Lyft Parish. As a collaborative partnership, our parish can shine a greater light into our community than any one of our individual congregations can do. So today I bring you the greetings of St. John's where I preached in early January and will extend your greetings to St. Mark where I will preach in mid-March. Today we are celebrating transfiguration, a celebration of mystery and confusion, but more importantly, a celebration of the light found as we follow and believe in Jesus Christ. We hear in today's gospel an encounter Peter, James, and John have up in the mountain with no witnesses. At the end of the gospel text, Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So I would imagine that the recollection we're reading about is something pulled from the memories of three men out in the wilderness months after the fact. Sounds a little bit like a fisherman's tale of just how big of a fish he caught. The fish grows over time, and the number of fish grows as well, becoming a bit of a mystery to those that hear the story just how small that one fish probably was. Or perhaps this story is 100% factual. It is still extremely mysterious. How could Elijah and Moses appear? a voice come from the clouds, and then everything vanish. I'm certainly not well-versed in ancient texts or skilled in translating, but the point of this text isn't for us to fully understand how the transfiguration happened, rather to understand that God works through our confusion to remind us that Jesus is who our lives are pointed towards, that in following Jesus we can discover the light is greater, and holding fast to our light as disciples of Jesus can guide us through the mysterious, often confusing, and sometimes overwhelming places in our lives. The light of discipleship is best symbolized in the light of our baptismal candles. A lit candle is presented at the end of the baptism liturgy with the words, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The Lutheran tradition has long held a practice of infant baptisms, so the candle is given to the sponsors or parents to hold. But this light isn't one that is extinguished simply because the baptismal liturgy has ended, or only held by others for us. It is a light we each possess through the love of Jesus. The children's song, this little light of mine is a perfect reminder of how we shine our lights brightly and don't hide the light under anything, like a bushel basket, or let others blow it out, like Satan. This simple children's song is often left behind in our childhood, and as adults we forget the need to shine our light everywhere we go. As adults, our daily lives can sometimes become filled with darkness, and we are in desperate need of reminders that light is greater. Our New Testament reading for today is that reminder. 
For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It is easy to feel that darkness cannot be escaped. Turning on the news, you hear of turmoil in foreign countries. Reading the local paper, it is hard to find much positive news. Scrolling our Facebook feeds, it seems that you are constantly hearing of another job loss, a marriage in peril, a cancer diagnosis, or other times that cloud life in darkness. We may in fact experience times in our own lives where it seems that our light is virtually extinguished between a schedule packed with running children or grandchildren places, medical bills that seem to never have a zero balance, driveways that constantly need shoveling, strained family relationships, and countless other storm clouds that darken our lives. But these are the times to hold on to this text from 2 Corinthians. And remember that light shines out of darkness. The light is greater. One of my favorite Martin Luther King Jr. quotes is, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. The light we have as disciples of Jesus is precisely what Martin Luther King Jr. is referencing. We have the light of Jesus' love, a light found in the symbolism of our baptismal candles. While it may seem easier to give in to the darkness, the darkness of all those negative circumstances in our personal lives, the darkness we see in the growing opioid epidemic consuming our community, to just allow more darkness to swallow up any light we have. But these are the times when the light of Christ is even more needed to drive out the darkness. Our celebration of the transfiguration today is a reminder to us all that as followers of Jesus, we are given light to shine as a way for Jesus' love to be abundantly felt by all. The sharing of this love is a tangible way for us to remember that light is greater. I attended, <clears throat> I attended Wittenberg University in Springfield, Ohio, where the motto is, having light, we pass it on to others. A motto that was weaved through all parts of our campus life, particularly as a Lutheran university that reinforced the intersection of religion and learning. I recall one time it being explained that each of us carries a candle throughout our life. When we find the places in our life where great joy exists, our lights will shine brightly. And it is the gift of light that the light doesn't dim as it lights a new candle. As more and more candles are lit, the light is greater and begins to illuminate even the darkest of places. I often think of this image of sharing candlelight as we celebrate Christmas Eve. As the candle lighting portion of worship begins, we are instructed that it is the unlit candle that should be tipped, that the one holding the light remains steady and is reminded that in sharing, their light doesn't go out. The individual light we hold illuminates our faces and enough space to see the hymnal in front of us but the collective light of the congregation brightens the entire worship space. Pictures taken from the balconies of sanctuaries during candlelit services always take my breath away. To think of the power our light holds, the light that represents our baptismal promise, is something we remember will always be greater than any worldly challenges we face. What if this image of our collective light on Christmas Eve wasn't extinguished as Silent Night ends, but rather was taken out into our larger community? What if every member of a Lyft congregation actively participated in our outreach and discipleship opportunities? Perhaps each of our congregations could become the place where light is shared abundantly and those facing darkness could feel the love of Jesus bring light back into their lives. Lift could become like the mysterious light on the mountaintop as the disciples witness the transfiguration, 
we could become the place in which those overwhelmed by darkness discover that light is greater. But what would that take? The words of Walter Brueggemann, an Old Testament scholar and theologian, wrote in his prayer, rebrand us, and that speaks to what it will take. Rebrand us. You mark us with your water. You scar us with your name. You brand us with your vision, and we ponder our baptism, your water, your name, your vision. While we ponder, we are otherwise branded. Our imagination is consumed by other brands, winning with Nike, pausing with Coca-Cola, knowing and controlling with Microsoft. Rebrand us, transform our minds, renew our imagination, that we may be more fully who we are marked and hoped to be. We pray with candor and courage. Amen. Brueggemann acknowledges in his prayer that we are people of the world that are marketed to and bombarded by things that draw us away from the light of Christ. Things that veil us, just as we heard in our 2 Corinthians text. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. As disciples in this shared journey through Lyft, we have begun what Brueggemann prayed for by rebranding into a collaborative ministry to shine the light of Christ into our community. But the prayer continues with transforming our minds and renewing our imaginations. We cannot fall back on the way it used to be or that we don't have a need to change. The God of this world will never stop adapting and finding new ways in which to bring about darkness. I challenge you to consider the ways in which you can claim the prayer of rebrand us for yourself and to step out with the light of your baptismal promise, shining brightly as just one of the many examples of the love of Christ overcoming darkness and showing all of our community that light is greater. Amen.